I keep wondering, out of all the games I could possibly want to mod, I chose this game, which is the most hardest thing to get moddable. And you probably think by me making this video, I succeeded, but nope, I haven't. I grew up with a third person shooter game called Future Cop, uh, LAPD, which is a strategy game with a lot of tanks and stuff. To keep it simple, there are two teams, red and blue. The two teams fight control over the map, and there's a bunch of neutral turrets you can claim to, you know, shoot stuff for you. You can also make tanks and helicopters, and how you win is you get a tank into the enemy base. Oh, and I guess that there's dreadnoughts and flying fortresses, except not those, although it would be cool to see a World War II plane bomb futuristic No one has this big, beefy thing that will kill you in seconds if you get in its way, regardless of what team you're on. Yeah. Red base is under attack. And this other flying thing that obliterates everything on the map. Oh, and I guess there's this other mode that's supposed to be the main mode, but nobody talks about that. This game comes to mind when I think of games I grew up with, but I was never satisfied with the current content it had. The other mode that nobody cares about are missions. That was going to be the main and only part of the game until they decided to add Precinct Assault later on. So it didn't get a lot of content, but they still were trying to squeeze as much content as they could. The PC version actually had one more map than the PlayStation version, because maybe they had more time? There was never really going to be a PC version at all, but because they released it on Mac, they felt like they needed to have a PC release. If you're interested in the development of the game, there's a website of the programmers talking about the game. It's pretty interesting to hear what they have to say. According to them, the game was getting boycotted, but I'm not sure if that's exactly the reason why it sold so poorly. But I'm getting off topic. I always had these ideas of what would be cool to see in the game. Plus when I was younger they had this locked map that couldn't be played unless you beat Sky Captain on level 10 on all the maps. And if you've never played the game, Sky Captain is a computer player if you have no friends to play the game with you, like me, and beating him on level 10 was pretty hard. Well, when I was younger. So I grinded to unlock this level, and you know what it was? You know, you know what it was? It, it was a joke map. Taking another map, adding flowers and dragonflies and whatever this thing is. Needless to say, I was disappointed. But those memories of what could have been that map stayed with me, and I wanted to make an entirely new version of that game with my own image, so I started learning Blender and Unity, which was kind of complicated. I think I started three projects to get these ideas up and running, but they never did. Partly because I found some other person that had the same idea. I'll have a link in the description, he's doing some awesome work. Also, by the random chance the dude who's working on that is watching this video, I have one request. Please change the camera angle. <laughs> that, that, that's all. Anyways, so then I was thinking, I don't want to change the game. I just want to add more content. I wanted to add more features. I made old concept art of the color changes for the X1 units. And more and more, I started to think, could I mod this game? Yeah, I, I, I still don't really know the answer to that. But two years ago, I decided to not remaster the game, but to mod it. My thought process went, they somehow got Mario 64 off the N64 and onto the computer and made it moddable. How hard could it be? Pretty hard. The first thing I started to do was try to rip the game textures from these programs that ripped them off while the game was running, but then I forgot the game was old and it didn't work. And after that I sat there and thought, I really have no idea what I'm doing. So then I started to browse the game files and found this. The normal game files, the one I'm supposed to, you know, try to crack, was in the mission folders. But the files had no extension. So because this did have an extension, I thought, finally, I can look up stuff. Everything I tried didn't work. Because just because a file has an extension doesn't mean it's a CD file. And all the stuff I tried didn't work because the bin file held game content instead of the actual game like all these other openers were trying. So then I took to the internet and thought, where would be the best place to ask what to do? It was r slash hacking for some reason. I had some pretty nice people help me out. But pretty soon I realized, I really didn't know what I was doing. He gave me a bunch of source codes and APIs to work with IFF files, which is a file format of the mission files. 
So then I looked up everywhere on how to use these things, and all I did was figure out how to use the Python script. That then said these files were not IFF files. Because they're not really, but I'll get to that in a second. But then I stopped for a moment. I never even bothered looking up if there was any actual mods for this game. I just assumed there was not because no one played the game. <laughs> Guess that's not surprising. But I did find a dude that at least attempted to make a mod. He talks about the files and how it has an IFF file format, but it doesn't follow exactly by its own standards. He made a tool that I then downloaded, but it was a source code that, yet again, I didn't know how to use. Until I did, and I built the code, ran it, and thought, boom, did it, yep, figured it out. Except for the fact, I was nowhere close. This tool helps read the chunks, which for then was not very helpful because, again, I, I had no idea what I was doing. After this, I started to read all the files in hex viewers, and just plain old text editors, and I started to understand the files a little more. Okay, this little bit of the video is going to be kind of technical. These files are IFF files, but they have their own little format. The files store everything in chunks. A chunk is just a line of letters saying what type of chunk it is, and how much data is in it. Now, I'm not really sure what types of chunks mean. 90% of the time, the chunks start with COHS. But apparently, according to this tool, and just some other common sense, these start of the chunks are flipped, meaning these types of chunks are SHOCs, whatever that means. You can see that some chunks introduce a certain file stored within them, with this case being a RIFF WAV file. Each chunk is 4096 bytes max, but if a new file is stored within these chunks, it'll tell you how big it is. I, and I guess we know for a fact the audio files are stored as a RIF file. Unfortunately, I knew I could only get this far with not having an understanding of coding, and for the next year, I started learning C++, but then dropped it to learn Python. And just recently, for the first time, I wrote my program to start exporting files off the game. Now to people who know what they are doing, unlike me, this might look like very basic and inefficient, but this was my code. How I did it was I looked at the chunk list exported from the tool. And thank everything for that tool, because this would have been a lot harder without that chunk list. Anyways, I'd find where a new file would start. I'd grab the offset that was displayed, and then the file size. I would then put it into my function that would seek to the offset, and then read each binary value according to the file size. After that, I had a function to remove the separations of the chunks, that then gave the file to work. And for some reason, when I exported them, my files aren't distorted like it was with the tool. Then I used tile molester, <laughs> um, interesting name, to then look for the textures in the game. I then found where they started, but unfortunately I can't figure out how to get those files to work. I'm pretty sure these files are bitmap files, because that's what the bin file stored them as. But even after removing the chunks, it still doesn't work. And at least for now, that's when the story ends. In the future, I plan to figure out how to get these files and modify them and then put them back in the game so the game can read them. Now making an entire map would be pretty hard, but I mean, I've gotten this far, right? But then again. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs>